Welcome to Sakshi TV Special Immigration Talk Show with Somi Reddy Law Group. For today's show, we have Santosh Garu. Please note that Sakshi TV now has immigration shows every week on Mondays with Santosh Somi Reddy, on Tuesdays with Kaveti, on Wednesdays with Prashanti Reddy in English, on Thursdays with Chand Parvat Neni, and on Fridays with Banu and Indra. Please tune in to ask your questions. If you are an immigration attorney and would like to join our special shows, please email us at usasakshi.com or call us at 8667257441. Before we begin the show, please note that the information provided on the show is not legal advice and for general informational purposes only. Sakshi TV or its agents will not be responsible for the use of information. If you need any specific legal advice, please contact the attorney directly. Santosh Reddy needs no introduction, but if you need consultation, you can definitely log on to his law firm, which is Somi Reddy Law Group. Uh, they put up wealth of free information and online tools in the hand of immigrant community. So if you need any consultations, you can definitely contact to their law firm. So without any further delay, let us welcome Santosh Garu on our show. Santosh Reddy Garu, welcome, Andy. Uh, we're very happy to have you on our show today. Uh, welcome. This is your first show and I'm very excited to have you on board. Thank you, Shivani Garu. I'm sitting here. I'm excited to be part of the show and I look forward to many more shows like this. Yes. Uh, so, Reddy Garu, today we decided that we will be talking a little bit about uh, family laws. But before we get onto it, can we get an introduction about what you do, what your law firm does, and what kind of practices do you cover? Okay. So, my name is Santosh Somiridi. I'm the founder of Somiridi Law Group. We are a full service law firm with offices in Virginia, New Jersey, North Carolina, and India. Our core areas of practice include immigration, litigation, corporate, employment, criminal, and family law. So we have multiple attorneys working on different areas of law, and uh, I'm lucky that I had a chance of working on each area of each of these areas of law. So um, we are currently licensed in 14 states and the federal court. Um, so in all these 14 states, we practice pretty much everything. Any Anything that a typical IT consulting firm, engineering firm, or a, um, a immigrant would require. Got it. Got it. So uh, I think you basically if add you, like if a one from everything. Immigration. We do handle a lot of employment litigation matters. Um, any breach of uh, breach of non compete non association clauses. Also, we handle those. Any payment issues, and then we help clients with family law matters as well as criminal law matters. Yes. So basically, uh, so many ID law group is like a one stop solution for all your law firm uh, law problems. So I think with that note, let's get on with our today's topic. So today we decided we'll talk a little bit about uh, family laws and family immigration. So before we get on to this topic, um, can you explain a basic introduction about what these family immigration or family laws are in USA and how different is it in USA than in India? So, I guess you are referring to family law, not family immigration, family based immigration, right? Okay. Yeah. So, <clears throat> when it comes to family, uh, family law, right? In in India, it's I would say that it's more uh, favorable towards women. Uh, I would say uh, because based on the culture that we come from, but in the US, both both women and men are treated pretty much equally. So, depending on the situation, it might be better, depending on the situation, sometimes it may be better to file uh, for any proceedings in India, and sometimes it would be better filing for proceedings in the US. Okay, and also, there are a lot of these um, nuances um, in the regulations, especially in the US. Uh, first thing, the family law uh, regulations itself vary from state to state. So the regulations that could apply in the state of New Jersey may not apply in Virginia. Okay, so you have to um, look at the state specific rules. Okay, and also there are certain things that come into picture when, especially if the husband and wife, both of them are Indian citizens, right? But I'll give one example. I assume that husband and wife, both of them are Indian citizens and they get married in India, right? And one of the spouses wants to file for a divorce in the US. 
right? Because both of them are currently in the US. And typically, the US courts would have jurisdiction based on your residence. So, for example, if you have been living in uh, certain states for more than six months, then the court would have jurisdiction over your marriage, right? But the Indian courts would not necessarily agree with that. So, even if you get a divorce in the US, right? Um, the Indian courts may not agree with the divorce uh, so unless three uh, prongs are met, right? So, the first thing would be that the court should have jurisdiction over the marriage, okay? Uh, so, that is easily obtainable, uh, especially if both husband and wife have been cohabitating in that particular state. The second challenge would be that whatever the basis for the divorce is, right, it has to be allowed as per the Hindu Marriage Act, right? So, typically under the Hindu Marriage Act also, if a couple has been separated for more than one year, right, if they don't have any minor children, they could be eligible for divorce. Right, but the third one is going to be the problem. So the third one requires that the other other spouse, the uh, contesting spouse, has to uh, litigate the matter in the court. So, for example, if husband goes goes ahead and files for a divorce in the U.S., right, unless the wife contests the divorce, it won't be valid in India. Okay, so in this case, even if the husband is able to obtain divorce. Right? Since it won't be valid in India, if the husband remarries, then the wife can file a bigamy case in India. This is a very serious problem uh, because a lot of the uh, attorneys in the US, family attorneys in the US, they will not know about the regulations in India. Okay? So, whenever you have a situation which involves Indian citizens, especially those who got married in India, it's better that you look at the family law matters, both from the Indian court perspective as well as the U.S. courts. Understood, understood. So now, okay. um, I think uh, the most common uh, query that, uh, you know, uh, people have is that there are so many divorces happening, of course, you know, when there is marriage, there are also divorce uh, balance in my <laughs> language but i think you know a lot of people have this question um that uh you know we got married in india let's say both mm -hmm. indian individuals they got married in india they moved and they got a divorce there or there are also stances where indians you know who are still on their work visa or uh, student visa they got married in usa Mm -hmm. And they're thinking to get a divorce. I'm sure there, there are situations like this. How different yes. does the US law, uh, you know, uh, abide in these kind of situations? Yeah. So first thing is people who are getting, because we have a lot of these cases wherein uh, individuals on H-1Bs, they get married in the US. Okay. And I see the biggest mistake that a lot of people do is not getting uh, the uh, marriage license to mar get married. Okay. So, if you get married without having the proper licensure in that state, then it will not be valid. Okay. The second thing is they don't register the marriage. That's also a problem. Okay. So, if you have, if you encounter such situations and if they, then you cannot, you will not typically apply for a divorce. Right. In these cases, what they would do is they will apply for what is called annulment. Okay. So, annulment is a legal terminology that is used. <clears throat> So if a person gets divorced, it's called divorce, right? But if you go through the annulment process, then it's like you never got married because the marriage was either entered into <laughs> by fraud or the marriage is not valid in the first place. Okay. And to answer your question, if both the individuals get married in the US, then the US courts, like if the divorce is granted in the US, it will be valid in India. Unlike the first case, which I discussed wherein the H-1B, the like Indian citizens got married in India. Here, since they got married in the U.S., the, the um, initial three-prong, um, uh, this thing that I mentioned, would not apply in this case. So, if they get it divorced in, in the U.S., it will be valid in India. Got it. 
So uh, let's talk about assets then. Uh, who determines uh, that who's going to get more assets? Because of course that plays a vital role in a marriage too. Yes. Um, and I think in India it is pretty uh, different because uh, you know uh, here they do um, I don't know bribe. But I don't know if is that a word or but it's, they they give money uh, to you know son-in-laws or vice versa whatever it is so it's pretty different here but how is it there in the u.s um as, and also when i'm ta- talking about u.s i am specifically talking about indian couples in u.s yeah so in the u.s when it comes to the property distribution right <laughs> any marital property when i say marital property property that was obtained while in marriage is equally distributed between the husband and the wife. Okay, so assume that one of the spouse is a doctor, the other spouse who is making maybe three or four thousand dollars a year, right? And the other spouse is a housewife. Okay, have been married for like five years or ten years, right? So whatever they earn during marriage will be split 50-50, even though one of the spouse was earning, the other spouse was not earning. Okay, so that is the distribution of marital property. When it comes to alimony, right? So when it comes to alimony, they look at various uh, parameters. One of them would be the length of their marriage, right? So if the, if the couple has been married for like only one year, one and a half year, then the alimony would be very little, okay? And the duration of the alimony will also be very minimum. Whereas if the couple has been married for a longer period, then the alimony like, um, would be for a much longer period compared to uh, the first scenario. Okay. Also, they look at the education levels of both the uh, spouses. Got it. Okay. Uh, yeah. Please continue. Please continue. Yeah. So then, and then they look at whether uh, they, one of the spouse. Like they look at various parameters, like the education of both the spouses, uh, whether they are capable of continuing to earn enough money so that they can have the same standard of living. Okay. Um, and then also they look at other uh, parameters to see, like uh, they will look at why they're getting divorced, right? So if it's based upon based divorce, then the, chance, the chances are that the spouse who is not at fault would be getting uh, the alimony. Yeah. So uh, let's talk about the kids situation there in the US. Uh, uh, Santosh Garu, when they get married, of course, they have uh, kids. Uh, my again, my uh, other uh, like this mind boggling question that I always have is that if a kid is born in US to an Indian, situ- sit- you know, uh, citizens, they're considered as a US citizen, right? If I'm not wrong, mm-hmm. yes or no? Right. Yeah. So, uh, what happens to the situation when it when a child is involved? So, who gets to get this custody of it? Is it the earning? Or like it in India, how you have the 16 years, the initial 16 years is supposed to stay with the mom and then later you can, you know, go or change, uh, you know, live with your dad. So what's the situation there in the US? Yeah. So there are two things that I want to mention here first. <clears throat> so usually it's the mother, if, 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 if the child is a minor, it's a mother who, who would get the uh, uh, joint custody. Okay, and both mother and that means physical custody. The mom gets a physical custody with visitations for the parent, uh, when uh, for the father, right? Whereas if there is any like if uh, for some reason if the mother is not in a position to take care of the child, then the physical custody could be given to the father also. In very exceptional circumstances. If the court feels that both mother and father are not eligible to receive the physical custody, then they may be able to issue the custody, physical custody to um, the grandparents also. But this happens in a very limited circumstances. Okay. A lot of times what we see is that one of the parent takes a child and then goes back to India. 
right? So whenever this something like this happens, it's considered as international child abduction. So basically you are taking the child with you, although you're one of the parent, if you are taking if the child without the approval from the other parent, right? That's considered as abduction. That okay. Right now, India, like, so whenever there's an international child abduction uh, situation, then what is called Hague Convention comes into picture. Okay. As of today, India is not a secretary to the Hague Convention. So some of the regulations may not apply, uh, but you can, they can still, for example, if you have a situation wherein one of the parent uh, takes it, like, for example, uh, takes child from Indian. Same thing applies to Indian schools also, so, right? So assume that both mom and dad are Indian citizens, the child was born in India, and if one of the parents brings the child to the US without the approval of the other parent, right? That's also considered as international child abduction, okay? It's actually a criminal case here, okay? So India does not recognize this one, and it's not part of the Hague Convention, so you may not be able to file a criminal case in India, but in, you can do that in the US. Got it. Uh, now, I think when we hear uh, divorces, we also hear a lot about child support. So who gets to give this child support? Is it the one, is it the parent who earns more comparatively to the other or who gets the custody? What's the so situation? So basically, that? yeah, the parent who has a physical custody of the child Okay, we'll be receiving the uh, child support. Okay, so typically when we are doing the child, uh, calculations for child support, we we'll look at the income of both the parents, the age of the children, okay, and any special circumstances. Maybe the child has some special needs or maybe uh, the child needs to go to a particular school, like maybe there is something else. So the court looks at all of these in coming up with the number for the child support. So even if, if even if uh, this the parent who does not have custody, right? Even if they are not making any money, still the court would require them to pay certain amount of money. In some states, like just sixty five dollars also. So for example, if a mom is a doctor, right? Uh, but mom has a physical custody, right? And dad maybe he doesn't make any money he still has to pay certain amount of money. Depending on the state, sometimes it could be even $65 also. That's a minimum. Oh, God. Okay. But if they're making more money, then it will be equally spent. Got it. Uh, now let's talk a little about so, joint custody. Uh, yeah. yeah, you can continue. If you have yeah. something so more to custody, add. Right? So now we're discussing about the physical, physical custody. Now the legal custody. Right. So, for example, you need to like make some decisions regarding where the child has to go to school or whatever you need to do. OK, so typically what happens is the courts would allow joint legal custody of the child. OK, with uh, but they will also say who would prevail in case if there is a controversy. For example, now you have joint custody, right, joint legal custody, right. And the court says that, hey, both the parents will have to decide on which school the student, the child has to go to, right? So if mom says that, hey, she has to go to this school and the father says another school, then it won't be possible, right? Because they are 50-50 split. So in those cases, the parent having physical custody would have a say. Okay, but that does not mean that it's always like the parent who has physical custody prevails, right? Because they have to give equal opportunity to the other parent and they should discuss the matter. Okay? If they don't do so, then the other parent could file a motion in the court. Got it. And I think this all happens till the child is a major... A major? Yeah. Till Unless age. they have other things and in some special circumstances, it could be past 18 years old. Got it. Got it. 
నౌ రెడ్డి గారు లెట్స్ టాక్ లిటిల్ బిట్ అబౌట్ ద వైలెన్స్ పార్ట్ యూ నో వేర్ యు నో అన్ఫార్చునేట్లీ ఐ థింక్ అట్ సమ్ పాయింట్ మేజర్లీ విమెన్ హూ ఆర్ గెట్ హూ గెట్ మ్యారీడ్ హియర్ ఇన్ ఇండియా అండ్ దే గో ఆన్ హెచ్ ఫోర్ వీజా అన్ఫార్చునేట్లీ సమ్ గో త్రూ డొమెస్టిక్ వైలెన్స్ ఇన్ దర్ హౌసెస్ హౌస్ హోల్డ్స్ యు నో and of course a lot of women even are scared to come out and speak about it because they scared that they don't really have anybody there and they're like i'm in an unknown country but i have nobody to go to so usually these kind of cases are buried underneath they, they don't really speak up so in what ways if if there are uh, a, a, you know god forbid and there are people watching the show who are going through this in what way can they come out and ask for a help and how can the us government help them good so in case if they are going to any domestic violence the first thing they have to do is to inform the police if there is any physical harm you need to inform the police and make sure they file a complaint okay and also there are a lot of organizations not profit organizations that are there to help if anyone is in that situation okay they could reach out to us we'll be happy to refer you to some organizations also uh but if 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 one of the spouses is going through any domestic violence situation they can definitely reach out to us and uh, sometimes they could be eligible for u visa also okay uh, even if a person like for, like we have seen lot of situations wherein a us citizen also gets married to somebody in india and then they're treated and all this stuff in those cases also they could be there is something called wawa violence against women act which they can use to uh, procure this status Okay. and also if you feel that a, a person is on h4 here and then if you feel that the other spouse is taking advantage of situation then they can always apply for a change of status while going through the proceedings in the us okay go ahead um but we have seen a lot of situations where in um uh how should i put this families are getting separated for silly reasons okay i'll give a small example we have had a situation where the husband and wife like they were they had a quarrel on something very silly right and the wife calls the cops and for some reason like maybe they had a fight or whatever then she would say hey my husband hit me or i hit my husband what right so if that happens then there is something called protection they issue a protection order and also if they if they come to know that the husband hit hit her right they, even if it was a one time thing they would put him in the jail right and once person goes to jail then it it creates a gap between the husband and wife okay well again you should not go through this like you should not um what i mean to say is um you have to i would recommend that you consult with an attorney or a non profit organization which deals with these before you take any steps true i think it's always better to speak yeah. up to someone i guess we have had situations where for silly reasons they, they like uh, the husband was put in jail but, and then the wife did not have any the resources then there, there is a protection order the husband cannot reach out to the wife if they, especially if they have small children and if the husband is only ready you know they there are lot of complications yeah of course now now that you were talking about the complications a uh, one question that popped up in my head was uh, not related to um, you know the h4 visas but what is the situation of people there are there are people who get married to american individuals too mm-hmm. so american citizens too um i i have my own family who are who are married to americans so what is going to happen if they get divorced because of course will the american citizens have an upper hand in it because they are american not really citizens? so as long as the marriage was entered in good faith okay even if it, if they go to the, i i know initially they get a conditional residence right conditional green card right so and then after getting the conditional green card i know the the both the spouses know that like they have to apply for a removal of condition within 2 years right and 
some of the people could take advantage of the situation be stating that hey she cannot get her green card until I sign the documentation for the mole of condition right but you don't have to be in a uh, violent relationship for that reason right so if there is an issue um, and if they may be put for a divorce right or if the, if the spouse has been battered by the uh, other spouse the US citizen spouse then what they can do is they can file for like a VAWA petition or they can up, still apply for removal of condition uh, stating that the initial marriage when they entered to the marriage it was entered in good faith as long as they are able to clearly document it they should be fine got it now uh, how about the assets um, uh, you know when they are getting married to uh, the american citizen yeah so any assets that they receive through hereditary okay before marriage okay it will be their personal property it won't fall at fall as marital property unlike in india yeah right so it will be considered as personal property as long as there is no coming link for example um assume that uh, um, the husband has received 1000 from his parents right and while in marriage they use that hundred dollars thousand dollars for you for um a deposit on a house right and then they started making the payments from the marital property which is whatever he he earned during marriage right so now there is commingling of funds now the unless he is able to clearly show that hey this this is the money that i received through hereditary property it becomes a community property so marital property I mean. so both husband and wife will have equal rights to it yes whereas if the husband like whatever the amount that he receives he keeps it separate then it will be his property got it now um let's talk about uh you know how um you know uh, uh, these parents they have these you know restoration orders i don't know if that's the current uh, correct word that you know people are you know people uh, let's say the primary uh, parent they are having the kid and you know there are many stances where you know the uh, other parent are not supposed to meet for certain mm -hmm. hours or mm -hmm. you know they have certain set of rules Extreme how are these yeah. rules made uh, on what basis is it on the basis of the divorce that they took in or mm -hmm. in in what what other ways so basically they will see the okay so the courts always look at the best interest of the child okay so if one of the parent is an aggressor like maybe the, the parent was involved in a domestic violence case right then there is a high chance that the court will grant a protection order against the parent okay so which will restrict the parent's access to the child okay but if they go through the normal divorce process then the child the court will try to distribute uh, the time that each the child spends with each of the parents right so and then they will clearly mention, hey, this this is these are the dates that this this parent would have access to the child, and these are the dates that the child would be with other parent, right? And if they if they need like um, they have to abide by that one, and if they need to make any modification, then they have to file and motion the court and get the court's approval on that one. Got it. And if one of the parent violates this order, they could be held contempt to the court. So you have to be very careful with that, um, especially in these domestic violence cases, right? For example, um, usually what happens is the wife complains, stating that my husband is shouting at me or like he hit me, whatever, right? And then there's a protection order against the husband, right? So the husband should not contact the wife. Or the wife also should not contact the husband, vice versa, right? So typically what happens is if the wife is new to the country or like if they have any minor children, then they want to, you know, they, they want to meet up for whatever reason, right? So if they do so, even, if, even though both the parties are in understanding, right, that will be a violation of law. 
okay and the husband could be put in jail for that reason so they have to be very careful when dealing with this one got it i think i think the us laws are way more stricter than more the stricter ones in than, india yeah uh, we have seen a lot of situations where in people get into trouble for silly reasons got it got it so i think on that note um santosh garu we will end today's topic it was lovely having you on my show today i think we did cover so much uh, you know so many different laws but yet again it was such an informative episode today thank you again santosh garu for tuning in i will definitely join in next week and talk about something interesting again uh, thank you for the viewers for tuning in you are watching sakshi tv with me shivani raj